Could the polar bear survive outside the Arctic Circle? Polar bears are the world's biggest and baddest predators, and have had that status for quite a while now. Yet, despite their incredible power and athleticism, their home range is restricted almost entirely to the Arctic Circle. This fact got us thinking, why? Are polar bears just simply unsuited to life outside the great frozen north? Could they live alongside their brown and black cousins in, say, a wooded forest? Let's talk about it. Polar Bear 101 Polar Bear, Ursus maritimus, is the largest bear species walking the Earth today. Since bears are the largest of all land-based carnivora creatures, the polar bear is also the largest terrestrial carnivore on our planet. Within the Ursidae bear family, polar bears are most closely related to brown bears, Ursus arctos. In fact, the two species can even breed with each other to produce fertile hybrids. These hybrids are yet to have a name that truly sticks, but terms like growler or pizzly have been used. Polar bears are easily recognizable thanks to their all-white, though sometimes yellowish, fur. However, despite their pale coating, their real skin is as black as night. Feel free to pause the video for a minute and go Google bald polar bear. But be warned, you won't be able to unsee it. As far as habitat, we all already know. They live at the North Pole with Santa, right? Well, they do live in the northern polar regions of the Arctic Circle, which includes Alaska, northern Canada, Russia, Svalbard, and Greenland. The most northern bears live about 16 miles from the North Pole proper, largely depending on the weather. You see, when it gets really cold in the north, some small ice islands can form off the northern coast of the bears' traditional zones. As you already know, these bears are tremendous swimmers and can easily cover 30 miles in a single trip. The longest polar bear swim on record is a whopping 220 miles. That means they can go far out to sea and potentially expand their range. Yet they don't. The furthest south wild polar bears travel in the Americas is Newfoundland, along the coast of the Labrador Sea. In Europe, they come to Norway proper when the pack ice is dense enough to support healthy seal populations. They may also pop up in Iceland if the ice permits, which it seldom does these days. In Eurasia, bears have been reported as far south as Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula, over 430 miles away from their typical limits in the northern region of Chukotka. By and large, sticking to the northern edge of the world has been a winning strategy for polar bears. Away from rich lands ripe for agriculture and settlement, they remain largely undisturbed in what is unquestionably their native domain. Very few animals are as suited to their home range as polar bears are suited to the north. Not only are they strong and durable swimmers to traverse the ice islets that harbor juicy seals, but they also have incredible energy stores in the form of blubber to keep them going in the inevitable lean times. Not to mention the white fur for the white landscape or the incredible sense of smell and hearing, the tremendous power, and the ice-cold ferocity. In essence, polar bears are the north, the spirit of survival in an environment few other animals would last a day in. As a result of this untapped ecosystem, these bears are some of the few animals that have no natural fear of people. They have even been known to actively pursue humans as prey when given the chance. Many a guard husky has ended up in the belly of a hungry, hungry polar bear, along with an unknown number of human beings. However, thanks to shelter and firearms, modern era attacks are very few. Between 1870 and 2014, there were 73 documented attacks worldwide or in this case, Arctic Circle-wide. Of those, 20 were fatalities, while the rest were injuries of varying severity. So if they aren't feasting on people, what do they normally eat? Well, whatever they want and can overpower. In most cases, their preferred prey is seals that live on the ice. The semi-aquatic mammals are angelically graceful in the water with insane speed and agility beyond most predators. However, on land, they are sluggish and limited by their flipper-like limbs. Therefore, their typical defensive strategy against terrestrial predators is to stick close to the ocean so they can make a quick dash to their aquatic refuge. Polar bears, as the chief of said terrestrial predators, employ varied approaches to catching their favorite prey. One approach is to sneak up on beached seals and target the most vulnerable individuals. Confused juveniles are those that ventured too far inland. Another is to target breathing holes in pack ice. For all their amazing swimming prowess, seals still have to breathe in oxygen at some point. 
Experienced polar bears are especially good at the waiting game one must play to catch a seal mid-breath. Displaying tremendous timing and power, bears are able to grab hold of full-grown seals and haul them clean out of the water. Alternatively, the bear itself can lurk underwater, ready to spring onto a beach or through a breathing hole to attack a seal stranded on land. In most of their approaches, they employ a degree of stealth. Their coats are perfect camouflage in most cases, and the bears themselves stalk intelligently, advancing slowly and when a target is inattentive. Once they have their prey cornered, the bears do what bears do best – sheer beastly savagery. Using their formidable paws and claws, they pin their quarry down while their near 3-inch canines tear through hide, blubber, and muscle with horrific ease. On land, seals' clumsy movements render them almost entirely defenseless, though their sharp teeth are best avoided. After a kill, the white ice bear sports a red face. Seal meat is especially rich in fat, which the bear consumes to supplement its own blubber stores. Additionally, seal mussels are rich in fresh water content, and they go a long way to keeping bears hydrated. Remember that much of the frozen north is actually a form of desert, with very little rainfall and limited freshwater sources. Bears will often go after seals of almost any size, but when it comes to walruses, they tend to avoid the really big ones. Walruses have very tough and thick hides that only the biggest bears can gain purchase on. In addition, they have dangerous tusks that only the boldest of bears would challenge. Mutilation is a death sentence in the Arctic, and walruses are more than happy to swing the gavel and rid themselves of one more hungry bear. Away from pinnipeds, the bears are known to pursue narwhals and beluga whales that come too close to shore. They also hunt reindeer and raid bird nests for eggs, or the birds themselves. Like their grizzly cousins, they're also very fond of fish and will go after invertebrates like lobsters and crabs. In rare cases, they may supplement their diet with berries, grasses, and seaweed. However, like with other carnivores known to occasionally dabble in greens, such behavior is likely meant to aid digestive functions rather than providing sustenance. When they're not hunting, they are scavenging. A lot of animals, and potentially travelers, die from other things in the north. The cold, starvation, or both. Polar bears will gladly help themselves to the carrion. For them, a free meal that doesn't require the exertion of an active hunt is as good as gold. These days, thanks to gradual human encroachment, polar bears have discovered the wonders of garbage. Like their black and brown cousins in the south, the ice bears are slowly learning that human settlements usually come with tasty treats that we simply throw away. Unfortunately, such inadvertent attraction of bears only increases the likelihood of dangerous encounters. Can they survive outside the Arctic? Before we answer this, we need to look at the polar bear as it is today. What are its adaptations? How can it best be described? If your answer was anything close to super bloody, super swimming killer ice bear, then you're halfway to the answers. The polar bear is built to brave and thrive in its home range because of its natural pale camouflage, its rich blubber reserves, insane swimming ability, and cunning brutality. Why would it venture south to landlocked environments that not only distance it from its favored prey, but also betray its white fur? Why move to places with faster land-based prey, more large predators, and most dangerous of all, more humans? It makes no sense. And given these and many other factors common outside the Arctic Circle, we have to say that the polar bear would not survive long outside its home range. Such a large predator no longer has a place in modern Europe and the Americas, for instance. It would likely be hunted to extinction before long. Additionally, other wild predators would be existential threats. Adult polar bears can take any animal in the world, but their cubs are vulnerable. With white coats gleaming, they'd be obvious targets for wolves, tigers, and other bears. Polar bears themselves are not above cannibalism, so you best believe that grizzly or black bears would not hesitate to kill baby ice bears. There's also the very real possibility of starvation. Polar bears are insanely strong and fairly quick, but their white coats are poor cover in pretty much any habitat outside the frozen north. Catching deer has never been a reliable plan A for bears seeking food, yet venturing south would limit their choices. They are more tuned towards hunting seals and other marine-adjacent animals. We also have to consider the threat of disease. 
the warmer climes of the south support all sorts of bacteria and viruses that could never hope to survive in the freezing polar regions. While bears like the black and brown are more than acclimated to such pathogens, the polar bear might be vulnerable. In the perfect storm, disease can be even more ravenous than starvation and predation combined. Then we have to look at the weather compared to what the bear is equipped for. Polar bears have thick coats of fur and equally thick layers of blubber. This basically means they are always rocking a natural, heavy-duty jacket. As a result, moving them to warmer regions would cause discomfort or, at worst, be life-threatening. Ultimately, despite the hardships, polar bears need their icy homes. The bitter cold supports their semi-aquatic lifestyle and provides access to their favorite food. This is why major efforts are being made to raise awareness of the threat of climate change and global warming. As the ice caps continue to melt, the polar bear's home range keeps shrinking. Ultimately, we are quickly approaching a point where the question of whether polar bears could survive outside Arctic conditions is much more than hypothetical.